In this video, I'm gonna tell you 10 ways the iPhone SE from 2022 is better than the Pixel 6a that just launched. If you didn't watch my prior video, we discussed reasons why the Pixel 6a beats it out, but we're gonna begin with number one here, and that is a much more thin and compact design. So I literally almost dropped this phone in the last video just due to how light and thin it is, and it's kind of refreshing using the SE after using such large phones like the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you know, and other phones like the S22 Ultra, the Pixel 6a, while it's not a super large feeling phone, the SE does slot in a little bit better for me, I would say, in terms of a thinner, lighter, compact feel. So definitely a reason this one does win it out. So the next one is the Apple A15 Bionic chipset, which basically is not beat by any Android phone. Not even more premium Android phones can beat out the iPhone SE in terms of just pure performance. This Apple A15 with 3.23 gigahertz, four gigabytes of RAM, it's a screamer. The only thing that kind of slows us down a little bit is that you're using the non-gesture based iOS experience, but still it's much faster CPU than the Tensor on board in the Pixel. Tensor is a great chip. It's a lot better than not having, you know, their own custom CPU, but still the A15, they've had more time to develop it, more years of refinements, and it's just a faster chip overall. So if you're looking for the technically better performance, you're gonna want the iPhone SE. This phone right here also gives 5G, so that's a great touch. Pixel 6a, just not as quick. Even though they're both on five nanometer architecture, this one is just gonna be the better one when it comes to just pure performance. And number three is a smoother overall feel. So even with the 60 Hertz panel on board, the iPhone SE still feels smoother than the 60 Hertz panel on the Pixel 6a. Now this is not bad, but the animations, they're just not as smooth as iOS. So I would say iOS on iPhone SE is a little bit smoother. So I like when Google puts the 90 Hertz panel, then it matches it a little bit better. But with the 60 Hertz, not gonna cut it here, the iPhone SE still gonna feel a little bit smoother to the touch. iOS just looks pretty great even on 60 Hertz. So when they went to the ProMotion, they really upped it. So if Apple does go to a ProMotion on the next SE, it's gonna be no contest unless Google does up it to a 90 Hertz or 120 Hertz panel. And number four is accessibility features are just better on the iPhone SE. There is quite a few here on the Pixel, but there's a lot more that you can do with the iPhone SE over here. And Apple definitely has quite a few nice touches to it, especially the accessibility shortcuts, back tap, stuff like that. You can see there's a ton of them inside of there. You do have some shortcuts here as well and things you could do on the Pixel, but it doesn't seem as packed as the iPhone's accessibility menu. So if this is something you care about a lot, iPhone SE takes the win pretty easily here versus Google Pixel 6a. If you don't use those features a lot, it probably won't matter to you, but I had to throw it in there. It's something that's pretty noticeable between the two. So while the Google Pixel 6a might look like glass, this phone definitely is not glass. This phone is, so it does allow for wireless charging, and that's gonna go in at number five. This has wireless charging, but I'm not gonna make this its own point, but I just also want to mention it's also faster charging. So 20 watts versus 18 watts here. So smaller battery means it'll charge faster. All in all, the battery charging experience is just better on the iPhone SE. Wireless charging makes it feel more premium than the Pixel 6a and faster charging is just more enjoyable on the iPhone SE because you don't have to wait as long. There is rapid charging on here at 18 watts, but it's a bigger battery, so it takes longer. The SE can top up pretty quickly as that's a 2018 milliamp hour battery. Plus you have those multiple ways to charge it. So definitely getting the win in that area. So the next one is actually the storage options. So I do have the lowest capacity here because this is not my main iPhone, but this does go up to 256 gigs. You can start out at 64, you can go to 128, and that's where the only storage capacity is on the Pixel 6a is the 128, which is a good sweet spot I would say, but just having an extra storage option on the SE definitely makes it a better pick if you're looking for more space. Yes, you can do cloud storage here, but you could do iCloud storage here as well. So definitely, I gotta say, SE is the move if you want that 256 gig option. It's not available on the Pixel 6a, plus the Pixel 6a is a little bit more. Now I'd say both of these are your best picks when it comes to software updates. The Pixel actually already has seen a software update since I got it. 
it's already getting another one it looks like so you do get you know updates pretty quick on the pixel the iphone se gets all the same updates you'll get on the 13 pro max the 13 pro the 14 series it's coming it's getting all those updates it's on 15.6 right now the beta has been out for a while we're gonna see 16 next month so definitely longer support when it comes to major software updates so if you're looking for major software updates in the long haul this is going to be the phone pixel provides five years of security updates but three years of major so for those of you going five years with a phone the se is still going to be the winner also it does tend to get updates a little bit quicker so i would say pixel is really close but the SE is going to be the winner still in the software area when it comes to updates. So while I did give the Pixel credit in the last video for having a dual camera setup, EIS, this one does have itself the better video performance for just the everyday user. You don't really have to know anything about how to take a video and your video on here is going to turn out pretty darn nice. Actually, if you just hold it steady, some people think you're a pro. It's that good on the SE. You can go to 4K 60 for even sharper content. In addition to that, the 4K 24 will have you having a little bit more of a cinematic look. And they did bring a few other tweaks here in the photo where you can kind of make it a little bit more like the iPhone 13 with these different modes, the rich contrast, vibrant, etc. Overall, I gotta say, the video camera performance is still king on the iPhone. It's really a good experience. So I'd pick this if I was just solely shooting a standard video. I really like how easy it is to take amazing video on the iPhone SE. And the next one is the Touch ID. So we always knock, well, I always knock the bezels. A lot of people knock the bezels on this phone. Some people love them, but having a physical Touch ID is always gonna be better than having a in-display fingerprint. I actually haven't found one in-display fingerprint phone that beats the fingerprint experience on Touch ID with its standard hardware button. It's always gonna be a little more accurate because you don't have anything interfering with it. So Touch ID, you probably knew this one was gonna be on the list. I mean, look at this. You don't, you don't even have to look at this thing all day, every day. It's just easy. I could do this a hundred times, it's so fun. The Google Pixel 6a though, I have to tell you, I've missed fired on that fingerprint more in one week than I have in several months with the iPhone SE. So it's gonna be an easy win on the left when it comes to fingerprint sensor. And lastly, the iPhone SE does provide you better security and better privacy, especially within the app store. Like if you start scrolling down, let's say you get into one of these like not well known sites, like I'm not gonna put anybody on blast. I don't wanna click any app because these developers might be well-meaning, honest developers. But when you start scrolling down in some of this customization stuff, you might find yourself a piece of malware in there. With the iPhone, not likely gonna happen. And definitely you're not gonna be downloading third-party software or you know just kind of going into APKs and stuff like that on this phone. You can probably find a way to jailbreak. People like to do that, but still most people aren't gonna do that on iPhone SE. This device right here is just feels a little bit more secure, private, day to day. So that's gonna wrap it up for me. You thought there wasn't 10 reasons, but those are my 10 reasons why. The SE is better than the Pixel 6a. So while on the surface with the hardware, it just looks like it destroys the SE, the SE does hold its own in a lot of areas and you heard about them in this video. Now, do you have any more? Did I miss any? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. I'd love to discuss with you. I'd love to hear some I missed because I, I do miss a few. Let me know in the comments. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.